Hey everyone, let's talk about slender columns. A column is slender if the ratio of its effective length to its radius of gyration is greater than 22. These are the derived gyradius formulas for a rectangular column or for a spiral column. The effective length of a column is defined as its unsupported length times a k-factor. The value of k or the effective length factor varies depending on what type of end connections the slender column has. So for example, if the slender column has pin-to-pin -pin ends or a hinge at both ends, then the k-factor value is equals to 1. The K factor can be taken from the alignment chart. It is the intersection point when a line is drawn to connect the values of Psi A to Psi B. Psi A and Psi B can be calculated using these formulas where A and B refers to the endpoints of the column. So if we have this frame for example and we are after column AB, Psi A can be calculated as the stiffness of column AB divided by the stiffness of beam 1 plus the stiffness of beam 2. And Psi B can be calculated as the stiffness of column AB plus the stiffness of column BC divided by the stiffness of, of beam 3 plus the stiffness of beam 4. E is the modulus of elasticity of concrete given by this formula. And I is the moment of inertia or the second moment of area given by this formula if the column is a rectangular column. According to ACI code, the concrete member should be taken as cracked section when calculating the moment of inertia to be used in determining the psi values. So when we calculate the psi values for column AB, for example, we will use only 0.35 of the moment of inertia of beams and 0.70 of the moment of inertia of columns. Aside from determining the slenderness ratio of a column, we also need to find out if the column is in a sway frame or if the column is in a non-sway frame. A column in a non-sway frame means it's laterally braced against sideways. There is a bracing member, for example a shear wall, that prevents the frame or the column to sway. But if the column is in a sway frame, it means that it's not braced against side sway, we need to account for transverse loads. We can determine if it falls under a sway or a non-sway frame using calculation. If the second order moments is less than 5% of the first order moments, then it's considered a non-sway frame. We can also use the stability index formula. If it's less than or equal to 0 0.05, then it's considered a non-sway frame. So after we determine that the column is slender and we know the type of frame, then we can proceed with the analysis. We know that the column has end moments due to load eccentricity, M1 and M2. And because it's a slender column, it's also susceptible to buckling. Hence, we need to consider the lateral deflection. This lateral deflection, or delta, will also produce a moment, which is the P-delta moment. So we have the initial deflection due to its slenderness, and this initial deflection will produce a bending moment. And since the bending moment is increased, then it will further cause deflection, and thus producing more moment and resulting to more deflection, and this goes on. This is known as the P-delta effects. Quantifying the P-delta moment is tedious unless we use a computer software. ACI code states that the theoretical design of a slender column must account for the effects of the bending moments, the deflections, the effects of the actual load and the duration of the applied loads, the varying member sizes and the end connections, and so on. But ACI also gives an alternative to do an approximation of moments using the moment magnification factor. We take the maximum end moment and then we multiply it with a magnification factor. 
So the objective is to find the maximum bending moment in a slender column. Then using the interaction diagram, we get the intersection of the maximum bending moment, defined as Rn, and the applied axial load intersection on the diagram gives the required steel ratio and so that we can solve for the required steel area. Note that you have to select the interaction diagram that matches with the gamma value and the material strength of the column in design. Let's look at this example for a slender column in a nice wave frame. The material properties, column size and height are given. The factored loads and the factored end moments are also given. It says that the frame is braced against sideways, so it's a nice wave frame. And it says the column is hinged at both ends. This means the effective length factor is equal to 1, so we don't need to calculate the side values for the alignment chart. It also says it has a single curvature. This means the deflected shape is a C shape. For a non sway frame, the slenderness ratio limit is calculated as 34 minus 12 times m1 over m2. Where m1 over m2 is taken as positive if the column is in single curvature or C shape deflected shape. M1 over M2 is taken as negative if it's in double curvature or an S-shape deflected shape. Also, this limit has a maximum value 40, meaning if you get a value 46, then you use 40. We then check the slenderness ratio of the column against the non-sway frame limit. The slenderness ratio is equal to 33, so it's greater than the limit value, so therefore this is a slender column. Next is to calculate the critical buckling load. The critical buckling load is calculated based on Euler's formula, which is equals to pi squared times the stiffness divided by the square of the effective length. The effective stiffness EI is given by this formula, where IG is the second moment of area and EC is the concrete modulus. And beta and S is the ratio of the factored sustained load to the factored total load. So using all the formulas above, we get the critical buckling load. Next is to calculate the magnified moment. CM for non-sway frame is calculated using this formula. If the column is in a sway frame, then CM is equals to 1. We take the maximum of the end moments and we magnify it using the magnification factor which is given by this formula. P refers to the total factored load and PCR is the critical buckling load calculated earlier. So we get a magnification factor of 1.14. We magnify M2 since this is the larger moment. So the magnified moment MC is equal to 261 kN-m. From here we can calculate the eccentricity. So we can use the interaction diagram to interpolate the required steel ratio and calculate the required steel area. Alternatively, we can use this maximum bending moment to do a column investigation. We calculate the corresponding eccentricity based on the maximum moment and the applied axial load. Say I already have a column of this size with 6 numbers 32 mm diameter bars. I just used my predefined formulas and I can check if my column is safe to take the magnified moment. Based on the eccentricity, we check the corresponding load to moment capacity of the column under investigation. If the capacity is greater than the maximum moment and the applied load, then the column is structurally safe.
based on the load to moment capacity of the column given the eccentricity, it is safe to carry the applied load and moment. Note that for a short column, the relationship between the axial load and the bending moment is linear. But for a slender column, it becomes a nonlinear relationship because of the P delta effects. Let's take a look at another example. Thank you.